Sweet. Two six. Uh, that'd be better, Hi, guys, and welcome to episode 34 of Scooter Dog Handler Live QA slash talk. First one of 2023. I hope you're all well. Uh, it's the first one I've done, well, first proper live I've done since before Christmas. The one after Christmas, which was a bit more of like a hangout. Um, I might do one of them next Sunday, if anyone's interested. Sunday evening next week. Um, I might do like another one of them hangouts where you just kind of hang out with me and the dogs and we'll just see what's on tv etc but we'll just hang out and have a have a chat for as long as it seems possible to do uh chip king hi buddy hi mate how are you doing hope you're well um i know you was going down to training not too long ago um i'll be going training next friday so if you're around and you you're going to be going training then i'll be at training next friday um but yeah obviously first one of 2023 it's been a cold week um i think ever since sort of that ever since that sort of snow that we had just before christmas it's been it's been pretty chilly had a had a few warm days but it's been it's been pretty chilly so i think being set up for sort of the winter stroke christmas time is 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 very valuable some of my neighbors coming back um but yeah i think i feel like it's been i feel like it's been decent i've had a pretty good start to, to 2023 to be fair um everything seems to be going reasonably well uh with cooper and ollie um ollie's allowed out now so yesterday was the first uh no today last night really last night was the first time that ollie was allowed out to to do to go out on walks and socialize with other dogs etc so that's been that's been pretty good um i took him to the park when i got home from work today which he which he enjoyed um and then when we when the fiance got home earlier we took both dogs out for a walk and that was a bit chaotic i mean it was it was dark that was a bit chaotic there was other dogs about um some not dog aggressive dogs but some dogs that were barking at ollie and coop from like across the road etc ollie got a little bit scared um where obviously he's only ever really dealt with uh with cooper um who's not reactive but they'll have a bit of a bit of a rough and a tumble and i think ollie's used to that so ollie being out and um experiencing other dogs some dogs like the when we went to the park a couple of dogs that were playing ball and ollie didn't really pay too much attention to them we was just doing our thing just having a walk around um to dogs that we went out when it was dark and they were started barking at him so that's a little bit of sort of environmental socialization in terms of him just being around like a general life kind of thing and and him being around where there are some dogs that are going to bark at him etc so yeah that, that's him that's for him to get used to i think having cooper next to him who doesn't care about other dogs barking at him um he he just he, he's not something that's ever really concerned him i think he's used to it with um obviously security dog training and things like that where dogs are barking a lot coop's very comfortable with that so hopefully getting ollie and coop out at the same time um will help ollie to adapt to that sort of environment of not really worrying about it um Dermot Leeson, evening folks, how is everyone? Yeah, I'm very well. Um, as far as I know, everyone else is as well. But yeah, I think it's like Ollie now being out. We're going to take him to a puppy morning in uh, tomorrow. So there's at the local uh, pets corner. Uh, so it's like a garden centre and then they've got like a pets corner. Um, they run a puppy hour um, every Saturday morning. So we're going to take him there tomorrow where there's going to be like seven other puppies. Um, just for just for him to sort of play around and and things like that we met a he met a puppy on the walk uh, this evening and they both sat there and had a sniff of each other and it was all very good um but i think it's i want ollie to learn to play with <clears throat> to play with other dogs to play with smaller dogs etc because like i say with him and coop it's very it's very much they have a bit of a rough and a tumble and they might uh, sort of hang around with each other etc but puppies and smaller dogs is something that Ollie's not really experienced since um, obviously we took him away from his brothers and his sisters. So I think that's going to be, uh, I think that's going to be interesting tomorrow morning. Um, what I want to do 
um, is something that I didn't really do with Coop. Something that I want to do with Ollie is allow him to to be able to play with the other dogs, etc. But have sort of treats, etc. To be able to to be able to call him away um, and come back to me whilst he's playing with the other dogs, trying to get that that in quite early. Something that I didn't do with Coop as sort of a pet owner um, is that we just used to let the dogs play, and because they was all playing nicely, etc. I just let him carry on. Where tomorrow with Ollie, I want him to be able to play with the puppies, but I want to be able to do recall whilst there's that distraction. So obviously I can do sort of recall now and you can put in some distractions and get him to do recall, etc. But I think starting tomorrow, especially when he's around like some puppies and there's like big distractions to play, etc., is that even in that um even in that environment where they're just socializing the dogs, is that I still want to get the um the recall whilst there's big distractions and see how that goes so that'll be a learning but it's something that i didn't do with coop that i really want to do with ollie so that if because the thing is with coop is when he's playing with other dogs he does have a recall but it's not that it's not as great where because of the sort of the early training that we've done so with ollie i want to get it in early that even if you are playing with other dogs i've got something that you want i.e treats i'm more fun you can come up to me and then i'll let you go back and then you can go and play uh josh green out mate just popping in for a quick hello uh got my lad tonight for a few for a few hours well welcome in um obviously once this um once this live ends it'll stay up so you can go back and watch it later so anything that we sort of talk about in the next sort of 50 odd minutes um that will all be up so you can come back and watch it later so i think that's a good thing about these lives is that even if um even if you only have a chance to pop in for a bit and then you have to pop back out, is that leaving it up, obviously people still get all of that information. Although you may not be able to, to get the question that you want asked, you can always put it down in the comments, etc. Or you can join the Discord. Discord, there's a link down there. Um, but leaving it up is that I think a lot of people have very similar questions, etc. And I think just leaving these lives up is that it, it benefits people that can't make a live, that they can go back and watch it and... I think through the, what's this, the 34th episode now, I think through the 34 episodes, a lot of people have got lots of questions asked. And I think people have got questions asked that they haven't had a chance to ask, but they've someone else has asked them. So I think this is why this um, this um these lives are good, is that lots of people feel quite comfortable coming in and just asking their questions that maybe they wouldn't put in the comments, etc. Um, which is something that I, wanted, I, I would like more to happen, is that a lot of people watch my videos and then ask me questions later where asking in the comments of videos etc maybe not just benefit you but it might benefit others and there's there may be like four or five people that are watching the video that have the same question but none of them four or five people ask so then therefore no one gets the answer where if someone just stuck their neck out and said like i was when when i was doing my uh nasdu is that i was always the one asking questions <clears throat> where if one person out of that four or five just put in the comments i don't quite understand this then they'll they'll get the answer and then hopefully the other people will get the answer as well so sometimes it's just about someone sticking their neck out and asking the question that they're thinking and i think with my channel and the especially these lives etc it's a safe place to do that you're not gonna you're not gonna get smashed for not knowing the answer i think that's something that i've been built my sort of channel on is that if someone asks a question you're not going to get hammered for not knowing the answer so i'm saying i want to see a little bit more in the in the comments of the videos as well <clears throat> um so i've got a really dry throat <clears throat> uh damn it hi michael i've seen many rottweilers used as security dog or are they frowned upon no uh, Rottweilers are probably, I would say, the second slash third most popular uh, security dog. I think <clears throat> they're probably tied with the Malinois. So I would say, in my opinion, uh, sort of German Shepherds, Dutch Shepherds, them kind of crosses. Um, I'd say that they're the most popular. <clears throat> and then I would say either Rottweilers or Mali. I think it's pretty 50-50 split to them being the next sort of second and third most used um and then you get the dobermans very few do i see of them i've probably only seen half a dozen um and a lot of them are just sort of starting out i've not seen many good ones i've not seen many fully trained ones i'm sure there's lots out there i'm sure that people have got them um but i would say that sort of 
uh, German Shepherds, Dutch Shepherds are the most popular uh, or sort of a, a cross of them. Um, and then Rottweilers and Malinois, I'd say is a pretty even split. Um, I would, no, I'd say it's pretty even split. I wouldn't say that there's more than more of one than the other. Um, I think as a first time handler, you'd go towards Rottweiler. I think Rottweilers and German Shepherds are the better first time dog for for a first time handler um, because they're not as you you can obviously get them with sort of high energy, high drive, etc. But they're not the same as Malinois. Uh, Rottweilers are probably um, a little less drivey. So, but then the German Shepherd, in my opinion, um, is easier to train than Rottweilers. So I'd say if you're looking at getting um, a security dog for the first time, then probably a Rottweiler or a German Shepherd would be your would be your best breeds. Um, I would go towards um, a German Shepherd, but that's my opinion. Obviously, I have a German Shepherd, so maybe I'm a bit biased. But uh, Rottweilers are are pretty commonly used. <clears throat> Um, oh god, what is up with me? I'm falling apart here. Uh, Josh Green, hi Derma. I know of a few hand that use them, I don't believe they are frowned upon. I've heard that they are pretty ignorant and tr to train, just what I've heard. I'm no expert, yeah. I think, from my, from my experience of, of seeing um, quite a variety of Rottweilers, I've probably seen 20 plus uh, sort of Rottweilers at training. Um, is that true? I've seen a large number of Rottweilers at training, and I think with with Rottweilers, what you see is that they are argumentative. Sometimes is that I've seen uh, I've seen people asking their Rottweilers to down, and the dog growling whilst it's down, whilst it's downing. So it does what you ask it to do, but it's letting you know that it's not happy about doing it. Um, which is why I say that German Shepherds are a little. I, in my opinion, are a little bit easier to train because they don't really have that sort of ignorance or that kind of back chat. Yes, they may bark, etc., but they don't have that kind of back chat. Um, I've seen Rottweilers where, that can be absolutely fine as long as you're holding its ear. So there was a, a dog handler that if he held the, the Rottweiler's ear, it would do obedience. It wouldn't be reactive. It would just walk around nicely. But if he tried to do obedience whilst it's not holding his ear, then it would be argumentative. It would be aggressive different things like that so i think rottweilers have their funny little ways um and it's i've seen like i say i've seen a few that will growl whilst they're doing what you ask it to do just saying that i'm doing it just letting you know i don't really want to do it but i understand i have to so like i say but then i think once um i think once you go away from work rottweilers are quite chilled out they're quite a, quite a family dog so I think that um, I think Rottweilers and German Shepherds are the best two. I would go towards Shepherd, but I can understand why people why, why people go towards Rottweilers as well. That and if you get bitten by a Rottweiler, as I think uh, Aaron said in one of my podcasts, the moment a Rottweiler bites you, it's game over because their their bite is more powerful than the German Shepherds. It's more powerful than a um, Malinois, I believe. But because the Rottweiler's got such a small snout, when it bites, the pressure through that small snout is is much better or much greater than the other breeds. So if you want a if you want to get a if you want a protection dog that's going to finish a fight straight away, it's going to be a Rottweiler because they can snap bones um, with the with the powerful with the power of their bites, etc. So I'll say. German Shepherds, Rottweilers, it's up to you. I would go towards German Shepherd as a first time, but Rottweilers can be very good as well. Just don't go to work. In my opinion, just don't go towards Doberman because unless you get them imported from abroad, the ones that are bred in the UK, I'm sure you can get good ones. This is not uh, this is not a matter of fact that you can't get any good ones, but most of the ones that you will get in the UK, their breeding is not great. It's been diluted. Uh, down quite a lot so that people can have them as pets the same way that people are fearing that that might happen with the Malinois so going back years and years the Dobermans were were bred to be security dogs but then people started having them as pets but then they started having issues where uh, Dobermans would be attacking people or whatever it was or, pe or pe pet owners couldn't control the Dobermans so what the breeders started to do is they started to take out 
the aggressive side of Dobermans so people could still have Dobermans as pets, but they wouldn't have to deal with the, the high aggression, high energy. So what you get now with a lot of Dobermans is that they're, lot, they're sort of very pet line that where they've been bred with the aggression side taken down a notch. Uh, which is what the which is what people are worrying about happening to Malinois because Malinois, in my opinion, are fully security dogs, uh, security dogs, sports dogs, that sort of side of it. But what you have now is that people in a two up, two down are buying Malinois. Malinois need a lot of room, a lot of uh, walks. They need to, to do a lot of play, etc. And what's happening with Malinois in someone that's got a two up, two down? is that they're destroying the house because they're bored or they go to work, come back and the dog's destroyed the house because the dog is bored, it's high energy, it needs to do something, it rips the sofa apart or they start taking the dog out and they can't, pet owners don't have the ability to train or the strictness to to train these Malinois, therefore they start getting reactive, they start misbehaving, etc. And when you've got a Malinois that's high drive, high energy, that's misbehaving, it's not a great look. So what happens is, is that a lot of Malinois get rehomed, they put in shelters or whatever it is. So what the breeders, what they're hoping the breeders won't do is look at that and say, well, we can still sell these Malinois for £1,500, £2,000. But if we can take the high energy, high aggression side out of them, then we're going to get more business because more people are going to be having these Malinois that are well trained, that are, are, are not high energy, high drive, and people can have them as pets. Therefore, we'll get more repeat business, or word of mouth will come better from us that we breed Malinois that people can have as pets. So that's what I think a lot of people are worrying about. It's what happened to the Dobermans. Um, I believe this is this is from listening to podcasts. This is from listening or talking to other people. That that's what kind of happened to the to the Doberman. Hopefully, that doesn't happen to Malinois and people pet owners start under, understanding that if you're going to have a Malinois, you need to be in security you need to be in sport you need to have an active uh, lifestyle etc um so therefore pet owners will stop buying Malinois just to have as couch potatoes because that's not what they are and stop having them as sort of like a fashion accessory and therefore hopefully they the breeders won't need to look at going down at the route of diluting the uh, the breed in order for people to be able to have them as pets. So I feel like I went a little bit off course then, but that's just kind of my idea of kind of that that sort of setup, etc. Um, but yeah, like I say, they're they're all pretty good. Cooper's not happy. Well, I've got so I've got the the door open, but if I have Cooper and Ollie in here, it'd be absolute chaos. So the missus has got Cooper and Ollie <clears throat> in there. Uh, let me let me go and let Coop out because otherwise he's going to keep scratching that door. I'll keep Ollie in there. Coop, you can come. Ollie, you stay. No, Ollie, you stay there. You can come. Ollie, you stay there. Right. Come on, you can come in. Keep. Can you jump up? Yeah. There you go. Are right, you happy? All right, we left that we left that big bad Ollie in the other room. Yeah. All right. You come chill out with those people because you're fans. It's your fans. Hey. Eh? Up here, Keith. Yeah. Up here. Yeah. They're your fans. So yeah, like I say, with uh with sort of shepherds and that, you can obviously buy or oh, you can buy like show line and things like that. A lot of people go down the working line route. Um you can have sort of the Czech line and all different types of German Shepherd. Um, obviously, do you, oh, excuse me. Um, but yeah, you can obviously all get different lines. As far as I'm as far as I'm aware, you don't really get sort of pet or show line Malinois. I think they're all they're all pretty sort of working line bred, etc. Um, but yeah, but that's a good question because obviously, like a lot of people, I think the typical. The typical member of the public will mostly see German Shepherds because they are the most uh, the most used. Um, but yeah, I'd like to say that's a good question because I don't think a lot of people kind of understand maybe the differences between the breeds. And I think it's good to it's good to look at um, all the breeds before you decide which uh, which one you want to go for. 
um, because I'd like say they all have their they all have their good sides and their bad sides, etc. But I think definitely if you're um, if if you're having a fa- if you've got a family, etc., I would say maybe shepherds or what wilders. And didn't last very long, did it? He's gone back in. So um, last few videos. Obviously, this is my first video since um, sort of New Year. Um, I was I was going to do a live last week, uh, but I was a bit busy. So I'll do one this week. And then like I say, hopefully I'm going to um, next Sunday, I'll hopefully do like a hangout where I'll be online for as long as as it seems it seems possible um as ever i can't even i can never remember what the last few videos that went out um so if we go back through right so there's the christmas one there's the podcast i probably would have spoken about the podcast um obviously you had my announcement about the uh the patreon um I think the Patreons, the Patreons, a difficult one because I want to do more. I want to do different things, etc. But it's just not possible um, without sort of some help. Um, so the Patreons there, and look, look, listen, look, I I understand that people are skeptical about it. I understand that people don't see why that they should pay for the information that I kind of give out, etc. And Look, the best the best way in which I can put to it is that people will spend forty pound a session to go to a NASDU trainer, and they will get a lot of information. They'll obviously do practical, but they'll get a lot of information from as little as three pound a month. You can get a year's worth of sort of a class, if you if you if you know what I mean. So, so someone to spend forty pounds to go to a session and get a lot of the information that I give out in sort of my videos, and that's not that's not necessarily sort of sort of the practical side, but it's a lot of like the theory side. It's about being a security security guard as such. So for as little as three pound a month, which is like thirty six pound a year, so it's less than one session. So for the price of less than one session a year, you just help support me and. Like I say three pound a month, it might not seem a lot to a lot of people, but just having that little extra um, would really help me out in order to do different things and different and, and things like that. Um, and I understand that people don't see why they should pay for for my information. I think that we live in, I think we live in a um, sort of a time where people only want to pay for what they perceive to be professionalism. So in terms of if they, if they see someone on TV and then they say oh i've got a patreon someone's like well this guy's on tv therefore i'm he must know what he's talking about therefore i want to i want to help him or i want to support that that sort of cause where someone that they see on youtube who's just a security dog handler that they may look at and say well why am i going to pay this guy he's just the same as us and the truth is, is that i am just the same as most dog handlers i am I am just doing that that same job, but obviously I'm trying to help people out, etc. And maybe I've helped out a lot of people as well. So hopefully people will start to to get an idea. And I don't want people to look at the Patreon and say that they're only paying for the the videos that are on Patreon. I want to look at it as the, the a whole thing. So it's not just I'm paying for the 20 videos that are going to be on Patreon. Look at it as that you're pay you're helping and you're paying for the 100 plus or the 60 70 plus videos that you get throughout the year um so yeah that's my thing about the about the patreon Look, i i understand that people are skeptical about it people don't it's not been done in this kind of industry or this kind of this kind of uh, part of the industry so i didn't expect people to to jump on it and and understand it but well, I just wanted to put it out that way Look, for for the price of one session you can get like you can help support me for a year's worth of information that you would get out of a four hour session somewhere else. So hopefully that's going to start taking off a little bit more. I've got something in order to do a giveaway soon. Um, just waiting for people to kind of sign up and people to to be involved for for it to for me to be able to do the giveaway, etc. So you had my announcement video, um, my 2022 by numbers. Um, so that was just my video, just explaining like, look, this is how many views I've got, different things like that. Um, 
with YouTube, I don't earn any money. So everything I do, these lives, all my videos, etc., I don't get paid for any of that. Um, my channel is not big enough in order to get any money. So if you are looking at my the Patreon and saying, well, he earns this money off of all of his YouTube videos, I don't earn any money for, for anything that I do. So um, that, you, that 2022 by numbers is just all my numbers in terms of engagement, in terms of views, watch hours, etc., um, I've done it last year and I think it's just interesting to see like either a progression of the channel or for people to look at and say, oh, actually, you get 35,000 uh, views a year, which is quite impressive or it's not very impressive, etc. And it's just putting the numbers out there and then hopefully we can refer back to them videos in like five, ten years time and say, look, this is where we started with 35,000 views a year. And now we're up at X amount a year. I'm not going to put a number on it because I'm either being very ambitious or I'm going to end up looking like an idiot. But that was my 2022 uh, by numbers. Then what we've got there, security dog handler unplanned. So that was just sort of an unplanned video. Um, I needed one for the Saturday. And there wasn't too much that I really wanted to to get out there wasn't uh, a message or there wasn't anything that had happened in discord throughout the week where i was like right, okay well people want a video about this so i just kind of done an unplanned one uh from memory that was i had a bit of a chat about uh about something and then obviously done a bit of training um done, done a bit of uh, bike work or like bike bar work done a bit of obedience in it as well um and that was just maybe a, a typical couple of hours with me on shift just doing bits and pieces etc um, again, I think that shows not the boring side of scoot dog handling, but the realistic side is that a lot of time it's just going to be you and the dog just having a bit of a bike bar tussle, maybe get out, do a bit of obedience, etc. And like that's just a typical couple of hours. I'm not saying I do that every couple of hours. So I don't get the dog out and do obedience like 15 times a night, but we get out and we do that sort of stuff. And it might be at the end of a patrol. So I might get out, do a patrol, and then might just stay out for like five, 10, 15 minutes um, and do a bit of and do a bit of extra. Once I know the site is secure and there's no one on the site, then we might do a little bit of bit of training, etc. But that's also that if maybe um, maybe I've done a patrol, <clears throat> maybe I've done a patrol and I've left a certain area and I've gone back, maybe they're presuming that I've gone back and sat in the van and then they come in then. So just keeping the dog out for maybe another 10, 15 minutes in an area where if someone was to walk on some scent would get to him then obviously we just stay out there a little bit longer because i think i think that's a trick that lots of um trespassers or criminals that will use is that they will wait for you to leave an area and then expect you not to go back where because my site's reasonably small just by keeping the dog out i'm keeping the dog in the area so normally after a patrol, we'll just do like some bite work or we'll do some obedience, different things like that. Maybe article search work, not massively all the time, but I might do it every now and then. Um, so that was that video, just doing like a typical couple of hours. But again, I think that just shows a realistic side of being a security dog handler. And it's not like you get out every hour and you're chasing someone or there's someone running on site with a bar and you have to do that sort of stuff that's typically what i've done for the past sort of 18 months two years two years don't know but yeah but like i say that's that's two years typically that's uh typically that's what you do on a day-to-day -day. it's not all action and different things like that that is a typical couple of hours that you will have in a 15 hour shift so you may do that for a couple of hours and then you may have a few hours off and then you might do it for an hour then you might have an hour off and then you might do it for a couple of hours so I think that, again, that just shows a realistic side of the job. Um, and then Security Dog Handler, How Much 2023. That's some. That's a video that I've wanted. Uh, to, that's something that I've wanted to do for a while. Um, obviously, when I first got into the industry, I've done my How Much video. Very popular video. I think helped a lot of people out. Um, so I wanted to do an update of that because since then, you have to have a, um, a valid, uh, valid first aid uh, certificate to apply for your SIA license. So my uh, SIA is up for renewal in October. Therefore, I need to have a up-to-date first aid in order to even get my renewal. Um, so it's obviously things like that. I've obviously got a bit more experience in terms of like stab vests, 
um, cages, different things like that. So that how much 2023 was a video that I wanted to do for a while just to update it. And I thought, well, starting 2023, there's going to be a lot of people that have come out of Christmas and now it's a fresh start in 2023 and they decide, right, this is the year that I wanted to get into security dog handling. How do I do it? And I think that video is 95% of everything that you're going to need to know from like, what do I need first? Right, first I need to get an SIA. Then, then I need to get my NASD. Then I need to do this. I need to do that. What do I need? What are the basics that I need in order to to set up a security dog handler? Torch, tactical vest, boots, different things like clothing. So, I think that that how much twenty twenty three video is a good update um, on the the original how much video, um, and I think it does give you a very good insight to to, to how much it's going to be. Um, because I think that there are a lot of people that, that kind of get into it um, and they have obviously uh, some money that they think, right, I'll use this in order to get into the into the industry. And then all of a sudden it starts costing a little bit more and then maybe they have to take a break for a while. So how, so if you're in a job and you know, right, in if I want to leave this job and I want to go into security dog handling, I need to make sure that I've got £3,000 of expenditure that I can throw at this um in order to, to to change career so a lot i don't i didn't want a lot of people like having a thousand pound and then saying right i'm going to get in security dog and then leaving their job and then before they know it that thousand pound is gone and they haven't got the next one so therefore they end up having to get another job to mm-hmm. to save up in order to carry on um Dermot Leeson, you're doing a great job, fellow. That's why we are all here. Well, thank you very much. I'm glad. I'm glad that I'm glad that I am helping. I'm glad that people. Uh, I mean, I get a I get a lot of um, I do get a lot of people saying that they enjoy what I do, etc. Um, which is which is why I keep doing it, to be honest. Because um, other than obviously going to training, etc., like, I never see any other security dog handlers. So it's nice to have to also surround myself with people that have similar interests people that are in similar parts similar jobs etc otherwise it would never i would never be able to ask questions that i have obviously i've got training but i don't go there that much and although training when you're there everyone um is very together and i can probably message quite a few people from training and say look i've got this like what's your opinion on it but i feel like having some people that are different um experiences in different parts of the country that have done things differently i think having them all in one place especially on like the uh the discord etc um is is something that i've really enjoyed as well as having people around um so that you are uh, you are on a shift at two three o'clock in the morning and you just want to chat to someone that there's always someone around uh Jack McCready, uh, any plans to try out a different trainer yet? You mentioned it a while back in Discord that it's something you might want to do. Um, yes and no. So I need to go to my trainer um, because it's the one that my company use. So I have to go to Terry in order to get my training, etc. cetera. Um, it is something that I want to do. And this kind of goes back to um, – this kind of goes back to – the Patreon as such is that yes, I can go to another trainer. It is possible for me to go to another trainer. My company won't mind that actually happening, but actually being able to have the time to do it um, in order to be able to pay for that session in order to do all of that sort of stuff is that it, it comes out of, um, it comes out of sort of my free time and my, my own wage etc and i understand that going to another trainer would be beneficial for me i understand that um but i think that that's why i tried to set up the patreon a little bit is that i wanted to to be able to go to another trainer be able to take um a day off work or whatever it is and make a video about going to different trainers and experience experiencing different things and then being able to feed back to you because there are lots of people that watch my videos from sort of, I don't know, Hertfordshire, sort of the Midlands, etc. And they're always saying, oh, like, does your trainer come to X, uh, to X place? And I say, well, no, Terry only does training in this, in uh, this area. So I think it would be beneficial that I would be able to go to a trainer in Essex. So it would be beneficial trainer in Sussex, London, or whatever it is, and be able to go to these different places and make a bit of a video. Whether these 
whether these trainers would let me do a video is another is another thing altogether. I think there there are lots of places that you could go to where they say, look, we don't want you to film our stuff. But I think it would be good to be able to go to these different uh, places and do sessions. So therefore, if someone is in Essex or they are in Northampton, they are in Hertfordshire or whatever it is, uh, if they ask me about um, trainers, etc., I'll say, well, I've been to this person. I really enjoyed it. Um, so I think it is something that I want to do, but it's having that free time. It's having that time to be able to travel elsewhere because i work a lot well i work i work as much as i as much as i as much as i need to but it doesn't leave me a lot of free time so in terms of going to a, a trainer on a let's have friday so i have most fridays off you know being able to go to a, a trainer i finish work at like half seven in the morning i obviously need to get some sleep um i obviously then need to travel to x place in order to do the session um and having that time to get to go and do it is is not is not possible because you have to remember i've got a fiance i've got a family etc um where i have to where i have to spend time with them so it's not as if that i can go to work because i my missus goes to work on a monday morning and i don't see her till a friday evening for me to turn around and say well for a youtube video or for dog training i'm going to go to x place on saturday so i'll be back sunday or i'm going saturday morning i won't be back till late it's it's not fair on everyone around which is why i've tried to use which is why no which is why the patreon is kind of there that if people want to see me go to these different trainers or do these different things that it'll be i'll be able to turn around and say right i can take a thursday night off therefore i can go to this trainer on a friday and i can do a video and i can show these people what they want it's 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 that it's that side of it that that patreon was set up for that it would give me the opportunity to be able to say right i can not work this thursday night but therefore i can go and do this video that everyone wants me to do um and different things like that so it is something that i want to do but it's not possible in the way that everything's set up at the moment um but like i say i'm hoping that the patreon will take off and then um i'll be able to do them certain different things and like there's there's a video that i want to do where i go to down to down with aaron and maybe spend a couple of days with him doing his not doing his job but spending a couple of days with him and sort of doing a video on that which i think will be beneficial to other people because that maybe maybe it is that i will go for like a ride along and me and him will do like a ride along and i'll make a video out of it and we'll chat about different things and maybe it's something a video that some people really want to see but like i say then videos aren't possible with the way in which uh, the setup is now i just don't have enough free time i don't have enough um yeah i don't have enough free time in order to do it um which is which is a shame but it's, it's it's something possibly for the future once this once these videos start earning me enough money or start earning me money where i can take time off in order to go and do different things um i spent three grand on the dog and then three four ish on everything else yeah i think like i said I've, in the how much 2023 video that's why i do sort of how much it's going to cost plus the dog plus the vehicle because you can spend three thousand pound on a trained dog or or a pretty much trained dog or you can get a, a puppy and kind of raise it and do, and do it that way or you can probably pick up a one-year-old that maybe it's like 800 quid so i think you i think in the how much 2023 video it was very much look this is what i've spent or this is typically how much it's going to cost but there are cheaper ways of doing it there are more expensive ways of doing it um i think that the um i think a lot of people I think when when you're looking at what's the most important things obviously the dog is very important but i think the way the both ways in which you do it whether you buy like a one-year-old that's part trained or whether you spend 800 pound or three thousand pound i feel like after sort of four or five years you can be a pretty similar place um, but a lot of it is like the cage, um, the torches, different things like that. I think they're the things that you can go cheap on at the start. But what that video was about was saying that you may find a torch that's 25 quid and not 90 quid, but maybe the 90 quid one is a little bit better. Maybe it lasts longer. Maybe you won't have to do repeat buys, etc. different things like that. I understand that you can spend 
up to seven grand on getting into the industry. But in that video, I showed that to the pretty much basics of what you're going to need that you could probably do it for near a three and a half, four, I want to say. I think nearer to three and a half, four, depending on the vehicle. Obviously, that all depends on whether you need to buy a van. I know that you've got a truck, but whether you need to buy a van, whether you already have an estate car, etc. Um, so I think that that's um, about two months. Um, so I think it depends if you've got an estate car ready to use or whether you need to go and buy a vehicle as well. But I think that that, that video just showed typically what is what you're going to need. Um, Jack McCready, I'm doing 90 hours a week at the moment. Yeah, I, I do, I'm doing 60 hours a week, which is obviously less than you. So obviously I have to work six days a week in order to get to where you are. And that is the thing about security dog handling that you have to understand is that um, with security dog handling, you have to put the hours in in order to earn a wage. It's, this, it's, not, a, it's not a get rich quick job. So it's not a job where you're going to be able to work two days a week and, and earn 40 grand a year. It's, it's not that job. You have to put the hours in. So Jack's doing 90 hours a week. I do 60 hours a week, which is typically still a lot more than people typically work. And like I say, if if I wanted to if I wanted to um, to earn the money to be able to do more stuff, I would end up having to do 75 to 90 hours a week, which I, is not something that I'm it's not something that I'm prepared to do to make a YouTube video. I'm not prepared to sacrifice family life and other things like that in order to make, in order to do YouTube videos. Um, but it, like I say, if it is one of them jobs that you have to put in the effort if you want to earn the money, etc. Um, <laughs> but yeah, that's just the nature of the job. Um, Raf's Raf's Gaff. Raf Scarf, I don't know. Raf, uh, at the moment, fifteen years of scaffolding. How long uh, it takes from zero to becoming a dog handler? Um, again, that all depends on the dog. So obviously, my dog was green, um, and I had to train him up, and it took me about six months. Um, but it can take longer, depending on the dog. But if you're someone that's going to buy a fully trained dog or spend three grand um on a fully trained dog obviously that dog could be passable straight away therefore you need to do your sia badge and your nasdu so the sia typically depending on when you can get a course so i think they run like um what's it called get licensed i'm pretty sure they run like a few a month so depending on that so you could probably get on a course uh, which is like a week so you pass that you're probably looking at a a few weeks to three to four weeks for you to get your license um, and then you've got to do your NASDU which typically is 60 hours they do do week intense courses so obviously you could do that uh, I don't like it but you could do that um, but I think uh, Jack said about two months at a push I think yeah typically something between two to three months if you buy a fully trained dog if you buy um, a dog that you need to train up to get to the standard it obviously depends on the dog it took me six months um in order to get to to get to that uh, kind of standard but some dogs will take longer some dogs might be might take it up quicker so it all de it's more depending on the dog um than you i'd say if, you, if you're just trying to pass as a handler without a dog i think you could probably get it within a couple of months uh doing the week into the week course for the sia and the week intense course uh with your nasdu um, so you, I think if you're just doing yourself, then you'd probably be a couple of months. If you are doing it with the dog, um, it can take a little bit longer. But obviously, you can do your you can do your SIA badge in that week, get your license, do your week intense course with uh, NASDU, and you can still work whilst you're training. So you can you can work whilst you're training, etc. Um, but I'd say yeah, about two months if it's just you. Depending on the dog, it could take longer. Um, it took me six months. Um, I was a plasterer beforehand. <laughs> um, just need an SIA badge in theory, although it's recommended that you go on through a course with a dog, but not an absolute necessity. And you won't struggle to get work without it either. 
uh, I got my SIA badge two weeks after the course. Yeah, I think they, I think they're pretty quick with the SIA now. Is that you go and do your course, and they, like I say, I think it's around about a two week turnaround um, once you apply for it, etc. I know that people have, have had problems and struggled with it before, but yeah, I'm pretty sure it was around sort of two to three weeks that you you end up getting your your SIA badge, and then obviously you can then apply for your NASDO. I think most places now they do. And NAS do week intense course at least once a month. So I think they're pretty regular as well. Um, there are certain people that I've I've heard stories about. Um, and I heard another one this week is that there, there are, you have to be careful with some of the people that you go and do the week intense courses with. I know there's quite a few people that have had uh, issues where they go and do the course and they're not getting their certificates, etc. Um, there are some there are some around that I know that are decent, but you just have to be speak to speak to some people around you. Um, if you, or you can speak to me and I'll try and get some some information on some people in your area that, that can be trusted because I've heard a few things lately um, about trainers that aren't doing it that great. Um, it's not a necessity to have NASDU NIP2 or equipment. It's not. But I don't like it, therefore I'm not going to promote. I'm not going to promote working a dog without a Nasdu Nip to or Bipta in terms of if you if you're training, if you're training, you're going through the training and you're working. I don't mind that. But people that don't have one and have no intention of getting a Nasdu Nip to or Bipta and go and work a dog is something that I don't like. I'm not going to promote, etc. Um, but yeah. Uh, what breed would you recommend? Rottweiler, German Shepherd, or Amstaff? What's an Am? What's an Amstaff? I'm not sure what an Amstaff is. In terms of uh, security dog handling, you could the the most recognised breeds are German Shepherds or Dutch Shepherds, Rottweilers. Ger uh, yeah, German Shepherds or Dutch Shepherds, Rottweilers. Dobermans or Malinois. Um, at the start of this video, I did I did talk about it a little bit. So once this is finished, you might want to go back watch the start of this. Um, I would typically I would go for a German Shepherd as a first time dog. Um, failing if you don't like um, if you don't like German Shepherds and you like Rottweilers, they're pretty good. Um, they can be a bit argumentative. Um, Dobermans I would I would leave alone and Malinois. Malinois are good, but they are, I would say, for very experienced handlers or people that have had dealings with high drive dogs before. Everyone that I've spoke to uh, has always said that German Shepherds are the better first time dog. Um, so I would go for, I would go for that. Um, I would go for a, a German Shepherd. If you don't like German Shepherds, you can always go for a Rottweiler, a, a Rottweiler. For now, I would leave Dobermans and Malinois alone. They're the four most recognised breeds. There are certain cross breeds that they may accept, um, but they won't. Ex but they won't accept things like staffs and different things like that. Um... All right, cool. Um Alfie Robinson, American staff, uh, not allowed. As do go, oi. Enough. Um, oi. Enough. Um, American staff. Oh, it's American staff, is it? Uh, yeah, they're not allowed. They won't allow bull breeds, different things like that. Um, they're allowed more like shepherds um, and different things like that. But like I, say, I think I think it is the same for Nipto and Bipto as well. You've got German Shepherd or Dutch Shepherd, Rottweiler, Doberman, Malinois, First time dog, Rottweiler, or German Shepherd. Um, GSD for first time dog from Alfie Robinson. I would agree with that. Uh, Mally are stupid, uh, pointless. Sat on a sh sat on a site with a dog that is constantly buzzing like that all the time. I agree. I, th that's one of the that's one of the reasons that I wouldn't. Um, that's one of the reasons why I wouldn't get a Mally is that people. People get the people get mallies and because of the job that we do and they think it's going to be every night chasing people, people attacking you and different things like that. And yes, if you're in the army and you you've got someone attacking you all the time, then 
yeah, that's why the army used them dogs. There's a reason that police use mainly German shepherds. It's because the, that dog will chill out. So when it's when it's a case of going onto a site and doing a typical 15-hour shift. So a typical 15-hour shift, having a Malinois that wants to run around, wants to do something, isn't going to be beneficial to you, especially if you go out, do a patrol. Let's say you've done a patrol for an hour. Doing a patrol for an hour does not wear out a Malinois. So therefore, you then put the Malinois back in the crate for half an hour, 45 minutes, whatever it is, and then that Malinois is going crazy in the back of the back of the crate because it wants to do something where German shepherds are less drivey. You're more inclined to be able to go and do an hour's patrol with a German shepherd, put it in the crate for 30 minutes, 45 minutes, 20 minutes, whatever it is, be able to put them in there and they will chill out for that certain period. They will still be alert to noises, smells, whatever it is, and alert you to it, but they're more inclined just to chill out for that period of time before it's time to go out again. Um, they are they allow cross breeds between any of the recognised breeds. Uh, Bipta allow a lot more cane corso. They allow cane corsos in in Bipta today. Interesting. I, I've never, I've never really looked into Bipta to be honest, because obviously our Naz do, so I kind of know that side. Aaron is um, Niptu, so obviously I've spoken to him about the Niptu side of it. Bipta's not a side I've really gone down, but I know a lot of people. I know a lot of people what talk about going on to um, sites with staffs and things like that, um, and I've always said that it's not possible. I think because I know because I know Nasdu, that's why you hear me talk about Nasdu quite a lot. It's not the case that it's um, the most recognised or the one that people talk about the most. It's just the one that I'm associated to, and I don't want to talk about other organisations when I don't know too much about them. Which is why it's good to do these lives and have different people in the Discord, etc., where they can um, chat about Niptu and Bipta that they're associated to, but or they know something about. Um, right, where was I? Uh, can course so, uh, Alfie Robinson, you can have crossbreeds that are allowed, i.e., German Shepherd Cross, Rot, Mali Cross, Dutch, etc., dogs that are allowed in NASDAQ, which makes sense because if they if they have obviously their recognized breeds, a crossbreed of that, as long as it's done the right way, um, it should come out pretty well. Um, and now I think. I'm, I'm going to say I don't know much about breeding, but I think that that's possibly a way in which people get Malinois with a bit lower drive if they crossbreed it with maybe like German Shepherds or Rottweilers. I'm not sure that that would be a great mix. I'm not saying it is, but that's a way in which maybe you could take a little bit of the 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 edge off of a Malinois is by crossbreeding it, which I don't agree with. I, th I, I think that Malinois should be kept as they are as their own breed, but they should just be used in the right way rather than having as having as um, pets, etc. Um, with Mallies, it all depends on the bloodline. Not all Mallies are crazy extreme drive. Yeah, there was a I popped into training last week um, just to go and sign some stuff, etc. And and uh, say hello to Terry and that because I haven't seen him since uh, Christmas and New Year. And there was a, a Mallie in there, and <clears throat> they was doing i think they just finished obedience and they was all going back into the back into like the training room etc and people were putting their dogs away etc and i walked in and as i as i was about to walk in i saw that there was a dog running around so i thought well i i'd literally just turned up so i was like well i'm not going to walk in there everyone else has, has seen this dog so there's like, oh no it's x dog no so i don't think it is anyway it was a mally and this mally was nice as it was just running around it was playing and different things like that so yeah there are Malinois that you can get that are reasonably lower drive that are nice dogs that you can have off lead and running around but unfortunately some of them are few and far between depending on training etc in my opinion depending on training they're quite few and far between um uh jack mccready's nip to bit uh 
uh, NASDAQ is the most recognized one in companies. Yeah, but like I say, I think with a lot of companies, they always say that we they will take on NASDAQ or equivalent, which, again, one of my videos I said recently, the equivalent is NIP2 or BIPTA. Um, it does need to it does need to be put into in my opinion it needs all to be put into one hat and that one hat should be SIA but they can they will bottle it because they don't want to be in they I don't think the government want to be associated with the dog section etc um, but I, it'd be so much easier if they just put it all under one all under one roof and then everyone would be singing from the same hymn sheet rather than one one handler being a NASDU, one being a NIP2, one being a BIPTO, and them having their own their own kind of um, it's the same information, but just differently put. Um, I think it'd be much easier if they were sold. A bit like the SIA. If you're a security guard, you have to have an SIA badge. I don't know. That it should be the same for security dog handling as well. But obviously, that's I don't think that's going to happen anytime soon. Um, I'd say uh i'd say it's leaning more towards nip2 recently i think that depends on i think that depends on um trainers as well I, I said in my i said in my video is that trainers people that are associated to nip2 bit uh nasdu it all depends on the trainer so for our for our own sake when i when i decided that i was going to get into this i went to i went to terry and it was because he was a NASDAQ trainer, that's why I had become a NASDAQ handler. I know that there are people down in sort of the the West Sussex, the Sussex area, that haven't got a NASDAQ trainer within sort of like 30 miles. So, But they do have a NIP2 one. So they're more inclined to become a NIP2 handler because there's a NIP2 trainer close enough to them. They're not going to travel 30, 30 miles, 40 miles to go to a NASDAQ trainer when a NIP2 one's right there. Um, so I think a lot of it does depend on who is the local, uh, who is the local trainer, or who's most local to you, who's been recommended to you. I think that's probably where how people end up in the, the organisation that they do, rather than people researching saying, well, Nasdu is the I've read Nasdu, Nipto, and Bipta. Nasdu is the one that seems right for me. That's the one I go to. It doesn't seem to go down that way. They turn up to a, a trainer. Or they get recommended to a trainer and they say, well, I'm a NASDAQ trainer. And someone says, hey, that's fine. Let's crack on. Um, is it better to be employed by a security company or self-employed as an agency work? Um, they they both have their upsides and their downsides. The way in which I would the way in which I would put it to you is that I believe that it's easier to get started as an employed. Uh, dog handler and then see what how you see how you like it see get get used to the get used to the industry understand the industry and then if you want to go self-employed after that i do know people that go self-employed straight away but they need to have contacts so if you're not someone that's got contacts in the security industry i would go um employed first get used to the industry make sure that you definitely want to stay in the industry etc for an extended period of time and then go self-employed afterwards i know that there are lots of people that go get, say go self-employed straight away so you can claim everything back but i do know people that have gone self-employed straight away but are struggling to find work so i would say go employed first if you decide to go self-employed later on once you understand the industry then i would do that because with self-employed with self-employed, you you as a business, you then um, things like insurances, different things like that. It's a bit like owning your own company. You need to know the ins and outs of everything about about that industry. So, um, would you say you as a scaffolder? So, you as a scaffolder will will understand sort of all the insurances that you need, the way in which the industry works, the way in which. Um, the way in which it's good to um, promote yourself as a scaffolder, but if if you like, if I went and done scaffolding tomorrow, like I went to a scaffolding um, training course and then got uh, a certificate to say, right, you're a, you can be a scaffolder now. Well, it'd be no point in me being um, a self-employed scaffolder 
next week because I don't know anyone that's in the scaffolding industry. I don't know how how it really works on a day to day basis. I don't know how to promote myself. I don't know how to talk to uh, people in order to get the work, etc. So unless you've got contacts in the industry already, I would say start off employed and then once you get your feet, etc., move on to self-employed and that afterwards. Uh, there'll be people that say differently to me. Right, um, Jack McCready, self-employed. Well, that went down well, didn't it? Um, Alfred Robinson, as I do ring sport, you find the ring the ring sport lions a lot calmer and easier to get on with. However, they have that intensity when it comes to work. Uh, Jack McCready, I travel past about two NASDAQ two traders to get to my train. <laughs> I think me and Jack, I think me and Jack knock heads quite a lot. Well, not knock heads, but I've every, I always feel like whenever I say something, Jack's has got a different opinion. Whenever Jack says something, I have a different opinion, which obviously works well in sort of the Discord as well, is that there's always a discussion going on. It's not just it's not just someone just sitting there going, oh, yeah, mm, yeah. No, I think we always have uh, we always have our own opinions. Um, so Jack went self-employed straight away. Uh I'll give you two numbers that will give you full-time work right now. Got to be willing to travel. Yeah. So, like I say, again, with the, uh, I think with um, with this job as well, especially self-employed, I think most of the people that are self-employed, they are ones that go away and they're, they're willing to travel and stay over for periods of time. I think that a lot of people that uh, are employed are the people like me who just, want to leave their house, go to a site, want to come home, go back the next day, etc. Um, but again, I don't, I think when, if you get into the industry and learn how it works on a day to day basis and find your feet, etc. I think that's where you'll, you'll know whether you want to deal with that side of it, whether you want to deal with the end client, etc. or whether you just want to, to turn up, do your work and go back home. It depends what type of person that you are. Um, I'll say you're better to see what's available locally to you work-wise and then go with whatever they want, self-employed or PAY. That, that, that's, a, that's, a good way of, that's a good way of putting it. Speak to, local companies, uh, speak to local companies and say, look, I'm happy to go self-employed. I'm happy to go uh, PAY. Which one works better for you? And then maybe go down that route. Work, go what's better with them because they'll be the ones that could give you the work. Um they're definitely there are definitely more self-employed work at the moment than paye but you say that because like prestige has got loads of work and they're 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 looking for handers so this is in the sort of the kent southeast area they're looking for they're looking for handers because they've got more work than they have handlers um and i don't think it's a case of that i don't think it's a case of um there's definitely more self-employed work. I don't think it's the case that there's, there's more self-employed work. I think that there's just more handlers moving around all the time. I think with the self-employed handlers that they bump around to different companies all the time rather than just sticking with one. Um, but there's 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 so much work out there. I, I know that there, there are certain people that, that are struggling to find work and it's it's annoying because I just know how much work there is out there and there's only getting more and more all the time with insurances and different things like that. Um, but yeah, like I say, I think that there, there is there is a lot of PAYE work out there as well. I don't think that I don't think going into PAYE is going to cost you any hours a week, etc. Um, but obviously, self-employed, if you are willing to travel, then you can move around the country to find different places. Um, Jack might fight like a man. <laughs> The thing is with me, and, the thing is with me and Jack is that I don't feel, I don't feel like I feel like we always we're always up for a discussion. I feel well, we're always up for a discussion and um, it's always one of them things where oh, I, I do feel like one day that I'm going to argue Saints red, he's going to argue that Saints blue. And in the end, I'm going to start saying that something's blue and he's going to start saying that something's red. It's, it's like having them discussions a lot of the time. But I think that um, I think that that's healthy, to be honest. So uh, where are we at? We're at an hour and nearly five minutes. Um, has anyone got any last few questions? Um, again, I'm gonna. I, I'm planning on doing a hangout next Sunday. 
Um, so next Sunday, um, I'm planning on going live for a couple of hours, three hours. It's only me and the dogs at home, so I'll, I can be a, around a little bit, a little bit longer. So if anyone's got any last questions just before we, we shut this one down and then I'll like say next week, um, maybe we'll do a longer one. I'll come up with some nonsense. Maybe I'll do a little bit of um, a little bit of something. But um, yeah, if anyone's got any last questions before we shut this one down, I've got um, family. Uh, what's West Bad? West Bad putting it? I need to be I need to be there. I've left the missus sitting in the front room on a Friday night, sitting on her own for, for over an hour. I feel like it's time that I went in and uh, paid her some attention. So, um, so yeah, if no one's got anything else, uh, if you like this video, make sure I give it a... Uh, what's your plans with a cox? With a cocker? <laughs> cox. What's my plan with a cocker? My plan with a cocker at the moment is to make him a decent dog in terms of doing obedience, different things like that. My plan is to take him to drugs or explosives, need to look into that, uh, need to speak to a few people to look into that. My plan is to take him into drugs or explosives, but speak to people that know that side because I, I know very little about that side. So I need to speak to some people um, about that first and then decide what way we're going to do it. It might be a case that we go to a trainer and I say, right, let's do both. And then the trainer says, well, actually, he's a lot better at the explosives than he is to drugs, or he's a lot better at the drugs than he is the explosives. So maybe I'll take someone else's opinion to where we go with that. Um, but yeah, that's the plan. That is the plan. But at the moment, it's about making him a social dog with people, with other dogs, making him uh, sort of a rounded dog to start off with, <clears throat> start off with, which is why I'm taking him to like puppy, class, uh, puppy hour tomorrow. We've been taking him on walks and letting him meet people, letting him meet other dogs, meeting him meet, meet puppies, etc. Um, so at the moment, it's just about making him an all-rounded good dog. Um, and then later on, I'll speak to people, get some advice, and then hopefully drugs or explosives, depends on what he's good at. I'm I'm more inclined to, to just turn up and say, look, you tell me what he's going to be good at, and I'll go and do that. The same way when I got into security dog handling is that I needed to change job. And I looked at my dog and said, right, what can you do? Well, he can do this job, right? Well, I'll go and do that too. So with, with Ollie, it's going to be like, what can you do? What are you good at? Right. We'll go and do that. So I'm not restricting it on, this is definitely what he's going to do, or this is definitely what I want to do with him. Um, I would just want to make him a decent dog and then say, and then say, right, what are you good at? Let's go and do that. Um, if he's got a, a good node, the world's is oyster. Uh, G4S is a good shout as they do a lot of courses. Well, thank you. I will. That would be something that I will look down. Um, I know that the trainee trainer at my place, he's just gone through it with his lab. So he's uh, always going through it with his lab. So I want to speak to him a little bit and see who you, he used and get and just talk to him about it. Like, I'm not rushing into this. This is not a case of like, this is not a race in terms of, right, Ollie by 15 months or 18 months. I don't know how long it's going to take to train him up from a year's old because I think the same as Naz do, he can't do anything until he's a year old anyway. But I don't want it to be a race where I say like, by 18 months, he has to be doing something. Like I, with Because I've got Coop, because I've got Coop and I'm earning a wage, I don't want to rush into it and end up messing it up. I'd rather just take my time and say, right, well, if Ollie's going to take eight months in order to pass, then that's great. Um, from from the breeding and from um, from the breeders' experience of dogs that have that have come from similar litters or similar uh, parents, etc. I don't know how it works. Um, all of these dogs that have gone on to go and do. Um, drugs and explosives have been very good. So hopefully his nose is going to be good. The breeder knows a lot about Cocker Spaniels. And he's, he said to me um, that he believes that the dog is going to be, is going to be good. So I can only take his word for it. He knows who I am. He knows that, um, he knows that this dog is going to be under the spotlight in terms of people are going to be watching. So he, he's, in my opinion, he's not going to sell me a bad dog 
for me to end up failing. So as far as I know, he's going to be good. He seems pretty good. He seems very busy. <clears throat> he does like sniffing stuff out. He's very good with his nose in terms of I throw treats out for Cooper and Ollie to, to eat treats together as like a bonding thing. And Ollie's very quick around finding each treat because they're only they're only about that big. And I'll just throw them out across the room. And Ollie's busy and he, he always finds the little ones in the corners, different things like that. So so far he looks pretty good. Um his nose looks pretty good. Um it's quite interesting. It's I might even do that uh on Sunday. I'll throw some treats out and you can watch because Cooper's obviously a lot bigger, a lot slower, but I feel like he's a little bit more. Uh, experienced in knowing that like there's going to be more treats down the line. It's quite interesting to watch Coop and Ollie both work. So when they throw treats out, Ollie's very scary and he's like running around and he's finding them very quickly. And then you just see Coop and Coop's just like one there, one there, one there. And then Coop will go, you know, sniff and then oh, there's one over there. And like sometimes I do see Ollie kind of following Coop a little bit, like following his nose. But then I do see Ollie working independently finding ones in corners on his own uh, with his own nose. So it's interesting. Uh, maybe I'll do that next Sunday. I'll throw some treats out and you can watch them, watch how they both work at the same time, where Cooper's a lot slower and sort of moves around more strategically, where Ollie's just like runs around and he's like, that one, that one, that one, that one, that one. Um, it's a little bit like uh, if anyone's ever seen Over the Hedge, like watching Ollie do it, it's like watching the squirrel. Is it a squ I'm pretty sure it's a squirrel. Like over the hedge, where he's like bang, 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 and then you've got Coop, which is like bang, 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 bang. So yeah, that'd be interesting. Maybe I'll do that next Sunday, um, guys. If you like this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. Subscribe down below for loads more videos. I want to thank you all for watching, getting involved in the chat. Um, links below is my Discord um, and my Patreon. Look, if you want to sign up for my Patreon, Patreon costs um, three pound a month, which is basically one session's worth of. Uh, money for a whole year's worth of supporting me for all the information that i'll give the lives the videos etc um but yeah guys thanks for watching i hope you enjoyed that one hour 11 minutes and 41 42 seconds and i'll see you again next week hopefully keep an eye out anything and uh i'll put something up cheers guys cheers for watching have a good evening have a great weekend bye bye, -bye.